In these problems, we're dealing with a special type of distribution called a Bernoulli distribution. And we use the Bernoulli distribution in a case where we've got one thing that we're testing and it can either come out to be true or false, uh, a success case or a failure case. So let's say your, your question was, does a person have brown eyes? And you're testing all the people in the world. The success rate would be somewhere around 79%, I think, or a probability of 0.79. That would be one possible outcome. The other possible outcome would be that they don't have brown eyes, a failure case. So there'd be a, the remaining 21% would not have brown eyes. So this is an either or situation. That would have a probability of 0.21. The success case, we call a specific variable. We call that P. And the failure, we call a Q. We also give these two things values. The, the P has a value of 1, and the Q has a value of 0. So in a Bernoulli distribution, um, it's a very simplified case of probability. You can only have a yes or a no. And that makes the mean and the variance really easy to calculate. For the mean, what we would do is take the probability of the failure case and multiply it by zero. And we'd take the probability of the success case and multiply it by one. And you can see already this is going to disappear. And our prob our mean here is just going to be P. So in this case, if you know the success rate, you know the mean of this function or the expected value as they sometimes refer to it. Now, if you know Q, you can figure out P. If you know P, you can figure out Q because they always add up to 1. So just subtract one, uh, one of these values from 1 and you get the other value. So that's pretty easy. The variance is also easy to figure out. It's just P times Q. I'm not going to show you how that formula is derived, but it's pretty simple. So just take the success rate and multiply it by the failure rate, and you've got the variance of the Bernoulli distribution. So let's try a couple of problems here. The first one says for the Bernoulli distribution with a P of 0.47, so the success rate is 0.47, find the probability of the failure, the mean, and the variance. Well, the probability of the failure should be pretty easy. We know the success rate, so we just take it away from 1. So 1 minus 0.47 is going to give us 0.53. So that's our failure rate. And let's see, that would mean it could be A or it could be D. So we've already eliminated C and B. Our, our mean, our mu, is just P. And we know that P is 0.47. And the only one we find that in is, is A. So we know the answer, correct answer is A without even doing the last bit of math. But let's just go ahead and do that last bit of math. We want to find the variance. So I'm just going to grab my calculator here and punch in a 0.47, the success rate, times 0.53, the failure rate. And I get 0.2491, and yes, that's exactly uh, what it is here. So A is our correct answer there. Let's look at one other type of problem. This one down below says the probability of success for each event in a Bernoulli trial is P equals 0.1. Let me stop here for a second. I think we're going to need Q, so let's just go ahead and calculate Q, which is pretty easy. We just take 1 minus 0.1, so this is 0.9. And then it says, which of the following outcomes in a set of five Bernoulli trials has a probability of 0 0.00081? So you're testing something that can either be yes or no. It's yes 0.1 of the time. It's no 0.9 of the time. And you want to know what which one of these arrangements, for example, getting three P's in a row, then a Q, then a P, has this exact probability. To calculate that, you're really just multiplying these. These are you know, pr multiple prob probabilities of multiple things dependent on each other. So you just multiply them together. So this one, for example, is P times P times P times Q times P. And you'd punch that all into your calculator and you'd get a number. For this particular one, uh, it's going to be this one, the 0.1 times 0.9 times 0.1 times 0.9 times 0.1. And you might have been able to see that. You've got an 81 in here, so you know you need a 9 times a 9. So that's your Q times Q. And then the three Ps give you those three extra decimal points there. But if you punch all these into your calculator, you'll definitely find the right answer. 
So that is a little bit of work with the Bernoulli distribution.